Hi, and welcome back to Lisa's Stamp Studio. I've got a beautiful card for you today that uses what I'm calling the kaleidoscope layout. Here's a quick look at the card we're recreating. Lots of panels, but super easy to cut. And I'm gonna give you some great tips about putting it together, especially with some alignment. Beautiful focal point as well. And I've got an additional sample to share with you that is quite different. You'll be able to find the pictures, the cutting dimensions, and the template for this layout down in the video description below. There you'll find a link that will navigate you over to my blog post where that information is shared. If this is your first time visiting my channel, I would love to encourage you to subscribe. Click the subscribe button down below and make sure you click the bell icon that's next to it so that you'll get notifications when I'm live right here on YouTube as well as when I share a new video. Let's head over to the stamp table and let's get started on today's card. Here's a quick look at the card we're gonna be creating together. And as I said, I have another sample to share with you. So make sure you stay with me to the end of the video. We're going to start by doing the cutting and I have my stamp and trimmer here. It includes both a scoring and a cutting blade and they navigate up and down and out of the way so that you can keep them on the track at the same time. This clear cutting guide is gonna be really important for the cuts that we're gonna to make today. I'm using designer series paper. Now I wanted to demonstrate this one for you because it's important how you cut the panels in order to get that kaleidoscope pattern on the card base. The very first thing to do is to cut it in half at two inches, which is the halfway point. So I'm gonna line this up on my trimmer. There's a nice straight edge here at the top to make sure that that paper is nice and straight, and then we'll slice. Let's go ahead and independently work on these panels. So this one I'm gonna set off to the side. This is going to be the panels for the left side of the kaleidoscope layout. What we're going to do is we're going to turn it and we are going to cut it in half. Since this is five and a quarter, the half is at two and five eighths. So I'm going to line that up here and then I'm going to cut in half. These two panels will make up the top two and the bottom two quadrants on the card. So let's push this one off to the side for just a minute and let's work on this one because I know that the angle of the kaleidoscope on this top panel is going to go this way. It has to be cut in that direction. I'm gonna go ahead and close that track and because it's clear, I'm able to see through it. I am looking to align the pointed corner of the designer series paper here and here within that cutting track. Once I'm happy with it, all I have to do now is slice. That now gives us the top two panels for the upper left corner of the card. So I'm gonna put these together. I'm gonna to lay these off to the side. This one now needs to go in the other direction because the point goes this way. So I'm going to pivot this in the opposite direction. So this is now the top right and the bottom left. And we're gonna do the exact same thing. I'm gonna close the arm to that trimmer and I'm going to pivot that designer series paper to make sure that those tips are gonna fall within the cutting track. Then once I'm happy with it, all I'm going to do is slice. And again, just like before, I'm gonna keep these two together. I'm gonna to place them off to the side. Now we have the remaining two inch width that we're going to work with. And just like we did before, we are going to cut this in half at two and five eighths. So I'm lining that up once again, and then we're going to slice. Again, we have those two panels. Unlike the first cut that we made, this one needs to go now in the other direction. So we're gonna start in the upper right, and finish in the bottom left. I am going to align that designer series paper once again, and then we'll slice. And then I'm gonna take these two and I'm gonna put them off here to the side. So I'm keeping everything in order on my work surface. This next one now needs to go in the opposite direction. So I am now gonna cut this one on the upper left to the bottom right. And again, we're gonna do the exact same thing like we've done before. You'll see that I have my panels here. I like to keep them in order. I'm just gonna push them off to the side a little bit to give us a little bit of room to work with. And that's gonna go on a base of Knight of Navy cardstock. Now this measures four and a quarter by 11. I did score it in half before you join me. I like to use my bone folder for a nice crisp edge on the top of my card. Now it's just a matter of adhering these panels. So let's go ahead and let's start here with the two that were meant for the upper left corner. What I like to do is I like to line these two up first just to get a good idea of where they're going to be. The margin on this between the top and the side is gonna be very narrow, about an eighth of an inch. And I just eyeballed it. If you feel more comfortable, you certainly can take a pencil and you can make pencil lines. So I can see this is about where it's going to go. I'm gonna bring in my silicone craft sheet because we're gonna use a little bit of liquid glue. I have found that this is a lot easier than using adhesive because of the pointed ends. In addition, it's gonna dry just a tad slower and it's gonna give us a little bit of shifting and maneuvering ability on those panels. 
So I'm gonna go ahead and open up my liquid glue and I like to get it started here in my silicone craft sheet just to make sure that it's flowing well and I don't have any clumps. The great thing about the silicone craft sheet is that liquid glue, hot glue, and adhesive will not stick to it. Once this dries, it will turn opaque and I can simply rub it right off. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this top panel I'm going to turn it upside down to what's going to be my wrong side. This feels like Frost Designer Series paper is beautiful. So one side actually includes some patterns that you can use all year round. I'm using that paper piercing tool attachment just to help me pick that up. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to maneuver here to the top of the card and I'm looking to leave a very narrow margin at the top. And then I'm just going to pivot this to make it as straight as I can. And then once I'm happy, I'm just going to tack that in place. Now we've got the next quadrant and we're going to do the exact same thing. Make sure your glue has come out in a very thin amount because you don't want that to ooze outside of it. And then we're going to take this panel and this is going to go here. So I am looking more on the outside left edge here than I am mostly to the center of where this is going to fall. Just trying to align these edges so it looks like a rectangle. I'm going to switch over now to the next two panels that are here for this quadrant and we're going to do the exact same thing but for this side we are actually going to start with this so that we'll have a center margin. So again we're going to flip that over. We'll add a little glue to the outside. This now is going to get lined with a very narrow margin at the top as well as down the center. Just do your very best to align it and then we're going to press that in place. Obviously this one is going to go here and then I'm going to add the bottom two panels as well. Now once the quadrants are on, let's go ahead and work on the focal point. I've got a piece of Whisper White cardstock here, and I'm going to be using the Coordinating Knight of Navy ink pad. To coordinate with that, I decided to use the Snowflake Wishes stamp set, and I've pulled out one of the snowflakes here. I'm going to go ahead and ink that up in the Knight of Navy ink, and we'll stamp that right here on the cardstock. This image has a very, very pretty variegated look with some density in it. There is a coordinating die to this, so that stamp set is offered as a bundle with the die, or of course you can purchase it separately. So I went ahead and I aligned this, and then I passed this through my stamp and cut in a boss machine, which I did ahead of time just to save a little time, which left us with this. The die set is very abundant, so I chose a smaller snowflake with a piece of silver foil cardstock to bring in that beautiful designer series paper. I have my glue dots here, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up that snowflake, and I'm going to place the center right in the middle of the glue dot. That take your pick tool putty end is really, really handy, especially for these very delicate die cut areas. And then I'll use that to help me lift it off so I don't distort that. And that's going to get attached here to the middle of the snowflake. My next step is to go ahead and add dimensionals to the back side. I'm gonna take one of the larger dimensionals and place them here. And because I wanted to make sure that this was well braced for my envelope, I'm gonna be using the mini dimensionals to help anchor these smaller areas here. So I'm gonna place one of these and each of those stems of the snowflake. Once those are secure, I'm gonna go ahead and use that tip once again from this tool, and I'm gonna remove those paper backings. We're coming now here back to the base of the card, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna add that snowflake right front and center, and I did choose to put the points to help mimic the designer series paper. And to finish this off, I wanted to add some of the beautiful blue adhesive back gems. There are two tones of blue in here, and this darker blue with the iridescent center is gonna be perfect for this snowflake. They have glue dots already on the back, so that's going to make it really, really easy to apply. I didn't want to take away from the focal point of this kaleidoscope layout. So I'll go ahead and add another panel of cardstock to the inside and add my greeting when I'm ready to use my card. Now, I promised you I had one other card to share with you that is extremely different. Let me share that with you now. I use eight different colors. The great thing about this card is once you cut it in each color, you're going to be able to make eight cards from the leftover pieces. Unlike designer series paper where there is a direction, this is easy to cut because you can interchange the pieces to make them fit. Those extra pieces are gonna come in really handy to sit in front of the TV one night and put my cards together. The word happy was die cut using the amazing foam adhesive sheets and the playful alphabet. Each letter is die cut with the white cardstock and the foam tape already on the back, which makes them easy to apply and just a few coordinating rhinestones to play up the color. Whether you want to create this layout to create eight cards at one time, or perhaps you're interested in using your designer series paper that has a pattern, either one of these is a great way to use this brand new kaleidoscope layout.
If you don't already have a Stampin' Up! demonstrator and you are interested in receiving copies of the current catalog, head over to lisasstampstudio.com and click on Catalogs where you can request one there. If you have enjoyed today's video, would you please give it a thumbs up here on YouTube, which is a like. It certainly helps. And I look forward to having you join me next time. Have a great day.